That's what we're going to do. Hey, Jesse, you got an idea? Make another We Are the World. We are the universe and get more people involved. More, we got to somehow get in touch with uh, people that aren't from the world so we can make a We Are the Universe song. Son of a, let me think about this some more. We have a new record out. It's called Emperor of Sand. Did we just do a record? The album came out on March 31st, 2017, a week after my 46th birthday, which is cool. When we were thinking of the concept of the album, you know, making it like, you know, metaphors for cancer and time, and, you know, we just kind of had this, even before the cancer thing, it was like, Braun had a, a va like an idea for a vast desert kind of scenario. And I think when Sultan's Curse was like one of the first songs that came together, he was like, this just reminds me of like, you know, Lawrence of Arabia, or like some dudes like riding horses in the desert. And then we started doing the whole, you know, if cancer could manifest itself into like a creature, what would that creature look like? And that's what we told the artist. I'm, I'm pretty sure that it was Indiana Jones induced. But also, it's like a cotton mouth like thing. We want a dry, we just wanted a really dry looking album cover. Like Gandhi, we were gonna put Gandhi's flip flop on the album cover, but instead we just put that old gnarled up, red bearded looking dude. We had the desert and then the whole story of like, you're handed a death sentence, uh, you only have this much time to live, you're wandering this, this desert, which is, you know, life and time sand falling through the hourglass is, you know, your time just wasting away and this guy's traveling through the desert looking for, you know, water and food and uh, the sun represents radiation and, you know, chemotherapy and it's just turning into an adventure of our own. Where we recorded it is in, we tracked it in Kennesaw, Georgia and then we tracked the rest of it in Los Angeles, California at Henson Studios, and then in Atlanta was at this place called The Quarry. With producer Brendan O'Brien, who also did Crack the Sky. I love working with Brendan O'Brien. He's a, he's a pleasure and, a, and, and, I, and, and he's just a delight to work with. He's funny, talented, and he keeps the ball rolling. Sammy Sosa. In, you know, we knew it was going to be a, an epic record. So we needed an epic producer. Well, the writing process. That kind of process right there is highly coveted and, and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and seriously, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, uh, the process this time uh, versus last time. Have you ever seen the first Indiana Jones? Of course. And then you've seen the second one. It's kind of like the same process. It really had a lot to do with the studio that I built in my basement. It helped, really helped me facilitate all my ideas. Tons of legality, tons of red tape. You know, I'd just grab a guitar and, and go down the basement when I had an idea and I would just record a riff. And as much as we travel and tour, I'm always playing guitar and trying to, you know, capture riffs and ideas. And after I built the studio last year, I just, uh, I mean, I had so much stuff. I had like almost the entire album's worth of material. Just like, hey, here, here's the record. But uh, I, I'm not really like at liberty to say or talk about how any of that stuff went down, really. You know, Braun lives around the corner and he came over every day for about six months. And, you know, in between other life-changing things that were going on, where my mom got really sick with cancer and uh, Troy's wife was very sick and Braun's mom was very sick as well, so in between you know, hospital visits and, and traveling, we, Braun and I really dug in deep and just uh, explored all these riffs that I had and put most of it together ourselves. I'm not aware or at liberty to talk about any of that stuff. I had riffs like the song Sultan's Curse, the opening song, like I had almost that entire song uh, worked up for years, even before Once More Around the Sun. Writing process is pretty much always the same, you know. We, we, all, we all write a bunch of riffs and then we get together. We sift through them like archeologists looking for dinosaur bones and, and you know, if we find one, we're like, cool, throw it in the bag with the other bones and then 
The next thing you know, you got a bag of a bag of pakalau. Sultan's Curse was like four or five riffs. But it just wasn't completely ready yet. It was like, you know, pie you stick in the oven. It was just kind of sitting on the back burner for years and years. And that's how a lot of songs come come about. You know, they're old riffs or old songs that we just kind of push to the side for maybe a better song or something that was more immediate. Hey, speaking of, do you, have you seen my Dr. Dre beats? My Dr. Dre beats? We gotta find them, they're, they're MIA. Anyways. I personally don't do any of the song, uh, like, lyric writing at all. I'm strictly like just writing the riffs. That would be Braun's department. I know Braun and Troy wrote a lot of stuff together. And most of the concept, you know, Braun hones in on all that and brings it all to fruition, for sure. It's just, uh, I'm not, I've said too much.